oh, I'm going to show you this quilt, but you're going to have to wait until the end. Not only do I share with you how to make this really cool looking Bargello quilt, you get to see me make a mistake, you get to see me get frustrated, and you get to see me really mad. <laughs> Even though this quilt top's done, it may take me a couple days to get over it. Enough talking already. Let's get busy. The typical Bargello quilt that's out there right now takes two jelly roll packages. That's roughly 40 inch to 42 inch strips in a 42 strip pack. <laughs> and since I wanted to use up some of those scraps off of my scrap wall of fame over there, <laughs> which didn't make a dent in that scrap wall of fame, by the way. And I wanted to make a baby quilt. I had to change things up a bit. This is only two thirds of my finished quilt top. I could have made the baby quilt all with one set of strip piecing. And had I known that from the beginning, I would have, but I wasn't sure what I was doing because I'd never made a bar gel. I'm quilt, going to so. be making the last third of this quilt in today's video. I've already made the first two thirds, eight different colors and 40 inch strips. I put them in rainbow color order, connected them all together, trimmed the edges, cut them into the strips that I wanted. For the scrappy strips, what I did was find the cheapest, thinnest muslin that I could and I cut out two and a half inch strips. I went to my scrap wall of fame and I just sewed scraps on almost like a quilt as you go method, but just on the muslin strip. I just wanted to make sure that everything was nice and sturdy with all of these different scraps on there because I wasn't sure how it was going to react because there is a ton of seams in this quilt. I did purchase a white on white jelly roll strip to use as the white within this quilt. The less you have to cut out, the better, right? <laughs> I did buy a pre-cut jelly roll in black and I cut them in half. So these are two and a half inches wide, so I cut one and a quarter inches. And that's what these little slices are in here. That's what gives it that really pixelated look. I wanted to share with you this new color wheel. So many of you had questions about my little picture window. How this works is you lay it over top of the fabric and you run it through the picture window there and see if it matches up. And if it does, then it's in that color wheel area. And I thought, wow, I love it. It's huge compared to this little one. So it's the same concept, it's just a bigger space to check your colors in. Definitely must have for quilters. I always follow my color wheel for color order. So red will go first, then an orange color, then yellow, green, a turquoise, a blue, and a purple, and a pink. I'm lining this up so that I can see it. You're probably going to be seeing it backwards. <laughs> have red and then orange. Lay out all of your colors in the color order that you want to see. In my case, it's rainbow order. After I have them all in color order, I'm going to take them in sets of four in this case. So all four of these pieces, I will consider a unit and I will sew them and connect them all together. Keep in mind that in order for this not to bow and get wonky, if you start at this end and sew these together, then you would connect this one down here and start at this end and sew, start here and so on. So let's get these all sewn up. Let me just keep it real here. I would not be getting this done so fast if it wasn't for this Juki right here. There are special advantages to using my special Juki links down in my description box. Don't be shy check it out. So after you've sewn your unit together, where I had the scrappy piece, they were pressed away from the scrap. I'm just going to set that a little bit. And because I did that that way, I needed this one to do the same thing in a sense. That does actually help them nest really well when it comes to connecting everything back together. Make sure that you press everything out really good and that there's no ripples anywhere. Once you get all these ironed out nice, then you're going to attach all the colors together right in a row. After you get it all sewn together, then it's time to trim those rough edges all along the side. 
You may have some that are off like I do here, but you know, it is what it is. So just even it up best that you can. That one actually looks pretty good. <laughs> As a side note, I did make my strips a little bit longer, I think like 23 inches or so, because I knew I was going to have to trim off some along the edges. So I ended up left with around 21 inches. This is what it looks like all trimmed up. Houston, we have a problem. Here's the problem. My numbers are off. I am a whole inch off. I'm hoping that when I go to cut these into their strips that I was just wrong and wrote down the wrong measurement when I took that first initial picture of the first two thirds of this quilt. So let's see if I made a major one inch mistake. I don't know, I could have. Let's see. Before we cut these into their strips, you need to fold this so that these raw edges come together nice and even. And then you're going to sew a quarter inch right along here, connecting this together so you make a big tube. Now that it's in that tube, make it even smaller up on your mat. Make sure everything is folded up nice and even because we are going to cut strips with this just the way it is on our mat. So we don't want anything to get crazy. Now there is a certain way that you can cut these strips so that they go on a certain way as far as like how your pattern is. Since I have scraps, I didn't think it mattered, but it does. In the last set that I did, I started on this end and cut and found that it had to go on the opposite side of the quilt. I know that probably doesn't make sense, but I wanted my scraps to still be together and not scattered all over, but I guess in the end, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna start from this end to see if I can help that situation, but if it doesn't end up like that, it doesn't end up like that. My last strip that I need to connect to on the first two thirds of this quilt was two and three quarters. So now I need to cut down smaller, two and a half, two and a quarter, two, and so on until I get to one and then I start to go back up in measurement. So this one is going to be cut at two and a half. At two and a quarter, two. And then one and three quarters. The next strip needed to go here in the sequence. Since this one was two and three quarters, then this one needed to be two and a half. So let's open it up and see where it would fall along here. And just, we would pin that right like that, just so that we still see the sequence happening. Since we have that skinnier black piece in there, it's not going to match up perfectly with every block, like a normal Bargello would, which is kind of nice because we really don't have to worry about matching seams because everything will be just a little off and it ended up these do match, which is awesome. Oh my word, I really thought that they were not gonna match up. I thought where I had cut the scrap that it wouldn't be the next scrap in line, but it ends up being that way, so I'm super happy about that. <laughs> I'll keep lining these up, and then I'll show you what the next step is. Now it's time to get out the seam ripper. So you can see that these are all still looped, but I set them in the way that they're going to go in the rest of the quilt. So you're gonna find that first loop, unpin it, keep your place right here, and you're going to undo these two seams. This is where the magic happens with a Bargello. Once you've unpicked it, then it's this one big, real long piece. And then you're just going to pop it back up here and pin it. And that definitely is off. How did I do that? Oh my word. What did I do? It's like I'm missing a whole piece. I'm gonna shut the camera off and I'm gonna figure out what I did wrong. 
So here's the thing. I have no clue what I did wrong. If you can figure it out for me, please tell me because I'm just not sure. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone here. So at first I thought, well, maybe once I get it in the sewing machine and connect everything, that it will just stretch maybe, but there's not much stretch in this strip. I've checked that I have all the colors I need, all the strips that I needed. I've double checked the size of the strips that I originally started with. Everything matches up. But yet, <laughs> this set of strips is considerably shorter than the first two thirds of this quilt. So what I'm gonna do is sew these strips all together and see what I'm left with and then sew them to this, and then I will just cut the quilt to make it as square as possible. I guess. Tell me what you think I did wrong. Please, someone, enlighten me. <laughs> I'm definitely off. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just going to sew it, see what happens. Well, clearly, I messed up. I don't care. And you can see that I haphazardly sewed this because I was a little upset. So I'm not going to fib to you and tell you that this did not come with frustration because as you can see, it totally did. It upset me. And um, yeah, I kind of got mad at my quilt. I can see here that the shortest one is going to be this pink one right here. So I'm going to just line everything up best I can. I'm getting a little bit over my anger now, but I'm, you know, hey, it is what it is. In the end, I was totally off about an inch, just like I had determined earlier. Am I bummed? Yeah, I am, because I still didn't figure out what I did wrong on this quilt, but maybe one of you can tell me, hopefully. Here's my end result quilt in all of its stubborn glory. <laughs> Will I sandwich this quilt up and free motion quilt it? I don't know. Stay tuned. As frustrated as I was with this quilt, I still handpicked a video just for you. Click it. It's on your screen right now. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.